sex is not a sin. Sex was given to us by God to propagate the human race and for enjoyment within the bonds of certain rules that God laid down within matrimony. And the marks of a Christian are self-control and self-discipline. And Paul wrote to Timothy and said, keep thyself pure. How can you stay pure in a world like we live in? How can you stay pure and look at the newsstands? How can you stay pure and look at the films? How can you stay pure with all the temptations thrown at you? You can't. No way. Except one. If Christ is in your heart, he will give you the strength and the power because no temptation will come to you that's so strong but what he will provide a way to escape. Give your life to Christ tonight and let him take control of your life and let him be Lord of your life and let him rule that area of your life, your mind and your body and even your sex. Let him be Lord of your sex life. Then there was another young man by the name of Moses. We think often of Moses as being an old man with a beard, but it was in his youth that he made the decisions that brought him to greatness. Because the scripture says by faith Moses, when he'd come to years, maybe 17 or 18 years of age, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. Choose it. He had to make a choice. Rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. Now notice he was in Egypt, the son of Pharaoh's daughter, heir to the throne of Egypt, possibly to be the next Pharaoh. But he made a choice because he knew that his people, ancient Israel, were the slaves of the Egyptians. And he had to make a choice at the height of his glory at the height of all that was offered to him. And he said, no to Pharaoh. I will not be your son. I will choose to suffer and die with my people and serve the true and the living God. And that's exactly what he did. And we know Moses today is one of the great men of all history. He said, rather than enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. Now there's a difference between pleasure and joy. He that loveth pleasure shall be a poor man, the Bible says. And uh, the Bible says about one man, I gave my heart to know madness, pleasure, and folly, but this caused vexation of the spirit. But she that liveth in pleasure is dead while she lives. Lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. The Bible says there are people that love pleasure more than they love God. Which are you? Do you love God more than you do sinful pleasure? I'm not talking about sports and all of these wonderful things that we have. I'm talking about sinful pleasure. Now, joy is produced by the Holy Spirit. And there are hundreds of scriptures that talk about joy. You can have joy when you may not have pleasure because joy runs deep. The angel said to Mary on that first Christmas night, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. And even in suffering, when you come to Christ, God doesn't take away the suffering and he doesn't take away the problems and the difficulties of your life, not at all. He doesn't promise if you're unemployed that he's going to get you a job tomorrow morning if you accept Christ tonight. He promises that he'll give grace and strength and joy through it all. Blessed are ye when men shall hate you, he said, and when they shall separate you from their company and shall reproach you and cast out your name as evil for the Son of Man's sake. Rejoice in that day and leap for joy. He said, when you come to me, and you have trouble and tribulation and people even hate you, he said, jump up and down for joy. For behold, your reward is great in heaven, for in like manner did their fathers unto the prophets. All that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution, the Bible says. There's going to be suffering. Jesus said, if you're not willing to take up the cross and deny self, you cannot be my follower. Moses cho chose the joy of following God rather than the pleasures of Egypt. Which are you following? What is your choice tonight? 